1033, he's in the canal, he's in the canal. I'm done. Welcome to CSL TV. And I just hope you guys are having a beautiful blast day. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is just a review, a reaction, as well as an informational channel. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully the informational part of you and someone out. We're just going to watch some videos and talk about them. And if you've been rocking with your boy, I just got to say thank you so much for rocking with me. Because you could be somewhere else, but you decide to be here with CSL TV and watch these videos. Now, with that being said, I hope y'all have a beautiful, blessed day. It was just a horrific scene. Her last words were, please stop. Kelsey Barrett born in 1989, was a pilot and flight instructor. On December 2nd, 2018, Cheryl Barrett, Kelsey's mother, gave a call to the Woodland Police Department. She hadn't heard from her in over a week. The cops rolled on up, saw her car was in the driveway, her purse and cell phone, of course they were missing. There was also stale, uneaten food on the counter, work gear, makeup, that was all still at home. A missing persons report was filed. I still know somebody knows where she's at. There's more information out there. The last time Kelsey was seen was about 12.30 p.m. on the 22nd of November on surveillance cameras in the Safeway supermarket. Daughter Kaylee was with her. She was engaged to Patrick Frazy. He last saw Kelsey that day too when he took their child. They didn't live together. And he also said that Kelsey and himself broken up. Bizarrely, he also never notified the police that she was missing. Hmm, interesting. He received a text from Kelsey's cell phone on November 25th. Officers were able to contact her place of employment at Doss Aviation down in Pueblo, Colorado. They had received a text from Kelsey's phone on the 25th of November stating that she would not be into work the following week. Kelsey's phone gave a location near Gooding, Idaho on November 25th at about 5.13 in the afternoon. Which is around 800 miles from her home. A candlelit vigil was held. People were getting just a little bit worried. So there's about 50 to 60 folks. We spoke with the organizers of this vigil. I just felt it was the right thing to do. Now that's how you know you live in a good neighborhood. You have good people around you, a good community around you. When they come out and do something like this just to celebrate your life and the time that y'all had together to do with Patrick he didn't attend the vigil or any press conferences at all four days after Kelsey was missing a search warrant was executed on Patrick Frazee's home police thought that maybe he might just know a little bit more than he was letting on spit it out his phone was searched he submitted photographs and DNA Frazee dodged reporters and refused to answer questions this is private property Patrick why don't you talk to us can you tell us what happened Cheryl so that's because he guilty and there's a reason why he acted the way he acted Anybody, you know what I'm saying, who was really concerned or anything like that wouldn't be acting all shy and running away from stating how much they feel and hoping that the killer or whoever it is come for it, you know what I'm saying? What happened? Cheryl saw a suspicious stain on the underside of the toilet seat. She called the police. They found blood in her toilet, the outside of her bathtub, the bottom of a trash can, on the walls, the floor, a towel rack, the vanity, and on an electrical outlet. Not good. Today we arrested Patrick Frazee on charges of first degree murder of Kelsey Barrett. As you can tell from the arrest, sadly, we do not believe Kelsey is still alive. On December 31st, Patrick was formally charged with five counts of murder. Two counts of first degree murder and three counts of solicitation to commit murder. A few days later, they arrested 32 year old Crystal Lee, the nurse who worked in Idaho. The police and sheriff's departments in Twin Falls, Idaho were able to gather some evidence. Twin Falls is about a 40 minute drive from Gooding, Idaho, where Kelsey's cell phone pinged three days after she was last seen. She was also the ones who sent texts from Kelsey's phone. She pled guilty to one count of tampering with physical evidence and she agreed to testify against Patrick. Patrick had been having a relationship with Crystal Lee on again off again for about 10 years and he wanted Kelsey gone but he wanted full custody of their daughter. So this is how everything came together how they was able to uh, come up with the, the how can I say find the pieces to the puzzle that they was missing now we don't see how this situation play out now that they got a puzzle piece that they was missing. Who would tell Crystal that Kelsey was a terrible, abusive, horrible mother? They came up with this plan. Crystal would steal drugs from the place she was a nurse. She was gonna rock up with a Starbucks cup of coffee that was poisoned. That's honestly the stupidest murder plot I've ever heard in my life. These two were idiots. She rocked up, but she said she couldn't go through with it. So after three unsuccessful murder attempts, Patrick was like, I'll do it myself. He'd gone to Kelsey's home, concealing a baseball bat on Thanksgiving day. With their one-year-old daughter Kaylee playing in the next room, he blindfolded Kelsey and pretended he was going to light scented candles 
and play a guessing game with her, he pulled out the baseball bat and struck her 10 to 15 times. Her last words were, please stop. He Here's how Factor takes the strike. He then asked Crystal to get over there and clean up the mess. She thought that he might do what he'd done to Kelsey to her, so she drove the 12 hours, spent four hours cleaning it up. She said it was just a horrific scene. I have blood all over the floor of the wall. There were two chairs right there with the TV on top of it. There was a bunch of baby toys around the front. When did you start cleaning up first? I started picking up things that were blood splattered. In the interview, you told us that you had left blood spots. Can you show me where you left those? Maybe right there. There was a lot of blood all over the floor. So there may have been um, bloody footprints in here. You saw the clean blood up on the wall. So you sure that? The spray was from here all the way. At one point, he even asked her to search for a tooth near a vent in the home. So yeah, grizzly. She also filled six garbage bags with items from the home and burnt them. She refused to help him dispose of the body though, so he put it in a black bag, took her body to the family's farm and dumped it in a water trough. He then doused it in gasoline, covered it with wood and burned it. You know, with all of this, the police searched for Kelsey's body, but they they could never find it. On October 28, 2019, Patrick Frazee's trial began. Witness testimonies were heard from Crystal Lee and Kelsey's parents, as well as a Verizon store employee. Patrick came into his store on December 11th and asked if there was a way to change the pin on a phone if he didn't have the phone in his possession, and also if anybody could recover information from a phone that had been destroyed. What a unusually specific question to ask. On the last day of Patrick's trial, an inmate told the court, Patrick recently asked him to use his connections to a prison gang to kill a number of witnesses in the case. The hit list included detailed instructions on where to find the witnesses, allegedly writing, they all need to disappear and I'd really like to see Crystal with a bullet in her head. It took a jury three hours to reach their verdict. Patrick Frazee was found guilty of murder, tampering with a deceased human body, and three counts of solicitation to commit first degree murder. Patrick got life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus an additional 156 years for several other charges. Crystal Lee appeared in court in January 2020. She got three years for tampering with evidence. She also faces a year of parole when she is released. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I will see you, as always, real soon in the next video. Now that's sad as hell that, you know what I'm saying, these, these two motherfuckers, definitely him, up here to tried to kill the wife with the kid, then you didn't did that, you got your girlfriend involved, now you the motherfucking then said, dang, you snitched on me. Now you got your inmate up here trying to kill your girlfriend that helped you kill your other girl, your baby mama, your kid's mom at the time. It's like, bro, they should have gave his ass death row because this motherfucker is seriously ain't right. He's thinking killing is something that we're supposed to be doing in this world when you don't have that type of power, boy. High power is the one who, who say your time is done on earth. You know what I'm saying? Who the f is you? But man, that's crazy. Some of these stories would be watching, man. Some of these people, I'd be like, damn, we was living in, they was living in the world with us. The title of this video says, this dude escaped the police and then jumped into a infested pond. So we gonna see what this idiot then did. 1033, 1033. He's in the canal, he's in the canal. I'm done. Swim to me. Swim to me! Ten thirty three, ten thirty three. He's in the canal, he's in the canal. And uh He's in the canal. Get me units, he's in the canal. Swim to me! 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 Hi! Yankee 25. I'm on the border of Lakeview and Forest Park. I need another unit before I go in the canal. He's going under. I can't go in by myself. I'm going to him. I can't come back there. So this fucking idiot then went into a uh, alligator infested canal where he could get his dumb ass ate up in the pitch 
dark. Like he fucking got night vision or something. He can see what the hell's going on. You know, the alligators and all of them going to creep up and sneak up on you. You know what I'm saying? Right there. Get on the ground. It's the hole right there. Get on the ground. Oh, oh, on the ground. I can't breathe. Get on the ground. Stop. Put your hand on your back. Put your hand on your back. No. This, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. We're on the border. I have heart park. I have heart problems. I have heart problems. I have heart problems. Cut me. Please do it. Make you 25. So get in custody. I can't breathe. Can you get me out of the lake? Get him. How are you gonna let me catch you, man? I'm the slowest dude on the force. How are you gonna let me catch you? You should be able to outrun me. Come on. Come on, get him up. I right, have you seen the car, bigger. Watch your knee, man. Going when I got behind it, I ran the tag, it came back, that was a stolen tag. Okay. Which attacked to a newer vehicle, right. probably stolen. Was stolen. Um, he wasn't avoiding me, but he seemed like he was going back to the neighborhood that's dead end. Right. So right. I figured eventually he was going to bail out on me. Right, right. So you just bailed out? When he came up to a parking lot, I thought he was going to stop. So I went ahead and put my lights on Good. and the door popped open yeah. and the vehicle came to an abrupt stop and then he, he ran. It was great though, man. It was a good job. This is a, uh, a newer vehicle. And what they do a lot of times, the newer vehicles, when they're stolen, they put uh, stolen temp tags on the vehicle. And uh, Deputy Dodge ran this temp tag, and it came back stolen. And uh, when Deputy Dodge was behind him, he knew from his experience that a lot of these newer cars are usually stolen. He actually tried to flee this way. He got stuck, and he realized it was a canal when he bailed out. So he pretty familiar with what the hell's going on with um, these cars and stuff like that, of how they be selling them and what they do to try to blend in with the rest of us, you know. That's sad that... Even these Kia boys or Honda guys, whatever the fuck they call it. Um, that's sad. You can't even enjoy something you work hard and pay for without worrying if one of these little motherfuckers going to come through and steal your car. Why'd you run tonight, man? Because my license is suspended. Don't you think it would have been a lot easier if you just would have given up? You could have been saved us all these headaches? Yeah. So what's up with the vehicle? Whose vehicle is that? I bought the car from one of the, my, like, a guy in the neighborhood. How much? $350. When did you buy the car? When? When? About two weeks ago when I got out of jail. Okay. You bought the car for $350 two weeks ago? Mm-hmm. Okay. You don't know who owns that car? No. <sighs> okay. Let me, listen to me. If you get a car for $350, which is that car is probably worth about $15,000, wouldn't you think that maybe there's something wrong with the vehicle? And not to mention on that, you're running from the police when they try to stop you. No, he okay. never put his lights on. Whoever was behind me. Okay. Who gives you a $15,000 car for $350? Who does that? This guy who... Well, I mean, you should know better, man. Especially you're on pre-trial release for Grand Theft Auto. You should know that the vehicle's stolen. Let this be a lesson to you, okay? Don't run from the police in Oakland Park. Nah, he either stole that bitch or he ain't motherfucking goddamn bought it from somebody on some dumb retarded shit. And next thing you know, next thing you know, this happened. So why did you run? You knew the car was stolen. You knew it was bogus. You ain't got no license. You just got out two weeks ago and putting yourself right back into the same situation. And these type of people that be like repeated offenders and stupid shit never get a life. They never get to get their life back, you know, because they constantly doing stupid stuff. So don't be like one of them.